Cynthia Michael, thank you. And coming up next at 5, car inspections, bond snipping dogs, and hundreds of undercover cops. It's going to be a U.S. Open like no other. We're live for you. Plus, are we ready for a bioterror attack? New Jersey unveils a new weapon in the fight against terrorism. A new study has just kicked off here in New York looking at an experimental treatment for autism. I'm Dr. Mike Rosen. I'll give you all the details on how your child can participate. Coming up. Those stories plus the Yankees' last home game before a possible strike. We talk with players and fans next at 5. Governor George Pataki. In the past year, something remarkable has happened. Instead of tough times pulling us apart, they brought us together. We've set aside our differences and united on what makes us all New Yorkers. Pride, hard work, courage, and compassion. I'm proud of what you've done, and I'm proud to be your governor. I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you. There's nothing like a great night's sleep. I can get an early start in the morning and go out and do something just for me. It's a really good feeling. If you sometimes have trouble sleeping but worry about taking something, try Tylenol PM. It stops your pain and eases you into a restful night's sleep so you can wake up refreshed. Come on, honey. It's time to get up. I love my Tylenol PM. In eight years, New York State has lost 300,000 jobs and more leave every day because taxes are too high. Right now, there doesn't seem to be anyone in Albany willing to say no to special interest spending. I know New Yorkers are worried about the future. As governor, I will say no to special interest, reduce spending, cut taxes, and create jobs. Together, we can make it happen. Golisano for governor. Here come the Yankees. Yanks Red Sox, Tuesday at 7 on CBS 2. Right now on CBS 2 News at 5, from bomb-sniffing dogs to hundreds of undercover cops, get ready for a U.S. Open like no other. Also, fears of West Nile are very real on Long Island after the death of a man. Hear what health officials are doing. And one of the biggest studies ever on autism uncovers a potential treatment. Live from the CBS2 Information Center in New York, this is CBS2 News at 5. On this Monday, good evening, I'm Ernie Adastas. And I'm Mary Kelly, in for Dana Tyler. New York City law enforcement has a big task at hand. The job protecting fans, players, and workers of the world's largest tennis event in Flushing Meadows. They're doing that by taking unprecedented security steps. CBS2 News Queens reporter Rose Walia is live at the U.S. Open with that story for us. Rose. Well, Mary, Ernie, you have every local and federal authority here manning security. So far today, though, at the U.S. Open, no problem. They're sniffing around for weapons, checking cars for explosives, and directing traffic. The NYPD is out in force at the U.S. Tennis Center at Flushing Meadows Park. Whether it's undercover or in uniform, hundreds of officers are working with federal authorities to keep things safe at the U.S. Open for its duration. Any incidents at all today? None whatsoever. Things could not be going more smoothly. From the earliest of the early morning hours, the police department has done a simply outstanding job. There are no book bags of any size allowed in. This year, no backpacks, briefcases, coolers, video cameras, or glass bottles allowed in, and it's only one bag per person. Every one and thing is being examined carefully. I don't think anyone's going to bother the tennis matches. You don't think so? But are you glad to see the security anyway? Yes. I'm sure it's going to be tight, but... You didn't yeah. bring anything with you? Today. I didn't. I, I actually left my bag at home, knowing, that, knowing that they're going to you know, not let me in with it, which is perfectly fine with me. Those who didn't hear about the rules had to check their items in a nearby tent, but only after they paid $10. Charles Truslow from Virginia says it's unfair. You have other people that are allowed to bring bags in that can hold the same thing as your backpack in a duffel bag. So to me, it seems like it's more of a money gimmick. Because you got to pay 10 bucks. Because you have to pay 10 bucks. 
Officials say if you are coming to the match tonight at 7 o'clock, get here one hour early so that you can pick up tickets if you need to and also get checked out at the gates. We're live at Flushing Meadows Park. Rose Wally at CBS 2 News. Back to you. Okay, thank you, Rose. And the players and fans of this year's tournament will be paying a special tribute to the heroes of September the 11th. Besides the grueling matches, Patriotic Pride is taking center court at Arthur Ashe Stadium, along with the sea of stars and stripes. A symbolic firefighter statue stands at the stadium's complex entrance. It honors the heroes who died on 9-11. CBS 2's Amy Stone spoke to one tennis official who says that this year's Open takes on a new meaning. Last year, the men's finals concluded 36 hours before the entire world changed. And we thought about what we could do in our little way to pay tribute to civilian and uniform heroes. It's been eight years since the city's mayor attended the Open. Mayor Bloomberg is expected to make a speech at tonight's Salute to Heroes ceremony. Penny Crone will have much more on the ceremony coming up tonight on CBS 2 News at 6. And don't forget, you can catch all of the U.S. Open action right here on CBS 2. And all this week, the CBS 2 News at noon will come to you live from Flushing Meadows. It's a question that's haunted our government since 9-11. If terrorists strike again, will our hospitals be prepared? Today, officials in New Jersey unveil technology that could mean the difference between life and death. They look like a simple radio and telephone, but they could be the key to saving thousands of lives in another terrorist attack. This unique radio system will ensure, regardless of the circumstances or the tragedy confronted, New Jersey hospitals will be able to communicate flawlessly with the highest degree of quality as well as quantity of information. Today, New Jersey Governor James McGreevy announced plans for a new emergency radio system, one that will link the state's 85 acute care hospitals by the end of the year and provide instant, unbroken communications between EMS, physicians, and government agencies. Radios are a safety net. They are a backup system that allows communication if landline telephones, if cell phones, if internet communications uh, become inoperable. New Jersey is the first state in the country to implement this backup system. It was recommended by a state task force in the wake of 9-11, when severe communication breakdowns hindered rescue efforts. The achievement of this two-way radio system will enhance public safety and ensure that New Jersey is a national leader in communications disaster preparedness. Governor McGravy says New Jersey hospitals are footing the entire $1.5 million bill for the system. No word on when it will be implemented in New York hospitals. New developments in the anthrax investigation. The FBI will take another look now at an anthrax-tainted building in Florida. The Boca Raton building is home to tabloid publisher American Media. It's been sealed off since last fall when a worker there became the first person to die from the anthrax mailings. The FBI explained why it's going back in. The reason is simple. The results of the evidence collection that was done last October were generally reported as either positive or negative for anthrax. Since then, we've developed techniques that will allow us to determine the quantity and the distribution of the spores. In the meantime, tests conducted at three New Jersey postal facilities have come back negative for anthrax spores. The sites were tested after a tainted mailbox was discovered in Princeton. No additional testing is planned. White House lawyers are clearing the way for President Bush to target Iraq for a possible attack, citing constitutional authority to go to war without congressional approval. Speaking in Nashville, Vice President Cheney made the administration's strongest argument yet for a first attack. Simply stated, there is no doubt that Saddam Hussein now has weapons of mass destruction. There is no doubt that he is amassing them to use against our friends, against our allies, and against us. Meantime, hundreds of Iraqis turned out for the funerals of eight victims killed during a bombing raid by Western coalition planes. Yesterday, Britain and U.S. commanders said their planes attacked only after being threatened. The war on terrorism may mean double duty for thousands of National Guard members and reservists. With U.S. troops spread throughout Afghanistan and other regions, the Air Force has already notified at least 14,000 reservists that they may be needed for a second straight year of active duty. The biggest group facing an extended term, 5,700 Air National Guard security troops who protect bases in the U.S. and overseas. Officials say thousands of other Guard members and reservists may also be needed. 
In the Middle East, Israeli troops are keeping up the pressure on Palestinian cities. This despite a recent lull in terrorist attacks. CBS2 Middle East Bureau Chief Kimberly Dozier has this report tonight from Israel. Sick of Israel's military curfew, young men in Janine challenged their captors and paid for their defiance. Early this morning, Israeli troops rolled in with a vengeance, seeking and finding a man they say is a leading Hamas militant. These raids will continue, Israelis say, because they keep getting tips of planned militant attacks. Israel's defense minister, meanwhile, has frustrated Palestinian hopes for more Israeli troop withdrawals following the pullout from Bethlehem last week. He says his tanks and troops will stay put, perhaps for the next six weeks, through the Israeli religious holidays. There were more grim words from a senior Israeli commander. Israel's new army chief of staff has called the Palestinian threat a cancer that must be defeated by a decisive Israeli victory. Palestinian officials say that shows at least some parts of the Israeli leadership haven't yet finished with war. The Israelis uh, are backing down again uh, from any understanding we reach uh, with them. And this is a, a very dangerous uh, situation. But Israeli officials say there's no sign Palestinian forces are stepping in to protect their Israeli neighbors or even their own people. This woman was reportedly killed by Palestinian extremists who accused her of collaborating with Israel to help catch militant suspects. Israeli officials say the Palestinians are simply not yet ready to make war on their own to bring peace. Kimberly Dozier, CBS2 News, Tel Aviv. And the State University of New York has done an about-face regarding its study in Israel program. Earlier this month, SUNY announced it was suspending the program because of security concerns. But after Governor Pataki was criticized for the move, the university reinstated that program. Mary. A security scare at Kennedy Airport forced police to clear out a main terminal. Hundreds of people waited outside Terminal 4 last night while police checked a piece of luggage left inside a men's room. Arriving planes were kept on runways for an hour while bomb-sniffing dogs were brought in. Police said there was nothing dangerous inside the bag at JFK. The NYPD and the police in Buffalo are now trying to hunt down a fugitive wanted for two murders in Brooklyn. Yesterday, police say that they got a tip that 38-year-old Andre Neverson may be hiding in the basement of this house in Buffalo. Investigators from both the NYPD and local police say that they missed Neverson by just minutes. Neverson is wanted for a shooting death of his sister Patricia in her Crown Heights home. He is also suspected of killing his former girlfriend Donna Davis two days later. The mystery of two Oregon teenagers who disappeared from their apartment, apartment complex appears to be solved. 39-year-old Ward Weaver, a man who was their neighbor, is now the prime suspect. As CBS2 national correspondent Chris Lawrence tells us, two sets of remains were found over the weekend on property where Weaver used to live. The shrine in Oregon City now stretches the length of a city block. Hundreds of flowers, cards, and candles built by a public who made this crime personal. I hate to think that these mothers have been stripped of their daughters. I hate to see that these brothers and sisters are never going to see them again. It's not fair. Most never knew Ashley or Miranda, but now the girls' relatives know a little more about their neighbors. The community has been like family since all this started. Everybody's been supportive. Ashley Pond disappeared on her way to school in January. Miranda Gaddis two months later. Police found Miranda's remains in Ward Weaver's shed and removed a second body buried under a concrete slab. On Monday, FBI agents used radar to examine other parts of his property. So they will pick up any disturbance in the ground, such as digging that a hole that's been filled in. They will pick that up. Weaver was recently arrested on an unrelated rape charge, and he fits the FBI profile developed last winter. He lives across the street and knew both girls. Some have questioned why it took police so long to search his home, but not Miranda's grandfather. The police took the time they needed, and they did it right. They found my granddaughter. There's an interesting family connection with Weaver as well. His father sits on death row in California because about 20 years ago, he raped and murdered a woman, then buried her body in the backyard and paved it over. In Oregon City, Chris Lawrence, CBS2 News. The cause of Miranda's death will be determined when an autopsy is completed. Weaver says he allowed the FBI to search his property because, quote, he wanted the families to have closure. 
There is a consumer alert tonight concerning a popular breakfast sandwich, and we have it for you next. Plus, will today be the Yankees' last home game of the season? We talk to fans about Friday's looming strike date. And also tonight, some good news for Martha Stewart. We have word from congressional investigators. Plus, here are scientists search for a cure for AIDS has led them to the sea and giant manatees. And I'm meteorologist Janine Diadamo. Take a look right here. The clouds are coming up and into our neighborhoods, and they will soon be followed by rainfall. Don't miss my forecast. It's coming up. I'm Lisa Hill. Tomorrow, wake up to CBS 2 News this morning for breaking news, traffic, and weather, plus researchers on the verge of a dental breakthrough. How cavities could soon be a thing of the past. A CBS 2 Health Watch report tomorrow morning from 5 to 7. In eight years, New York State has lost 300,000 jobs, and more leave every day because taxes are too high. Right now, there doesn't seem to be anyone in Albany willing to say no to special interest spending. I know New Yorkers are worried about the future. As governor, I will say no to special interest, reduce spending, cut taxes, and create jobs. Together, we can make it happen. Galasano for governor. On the next Entertainment Tonight, Dr. Phil in the hot seat. Did I scare you yet? Not even close. <laughs> his new show's just weeks away. Now he gives Jan Carl the secrets of his marriage. What was the toughest time for you as a husband? Plus, Martha Stewart in jail. I've made us some decorative name tags. The new spoof that has her behind bars. Then the American Idol shocker. Tamira tells us what went wrong. Plus, whatever happened to the Brat Pack's Anthony Michael Hall at a star's Florida wedding next ET. Tonight at 7 on CBS 2. Are our kids going to have jobs? Are we going to be able to deliver on the promise of good public education? He grew up poor in the city and went on to build a nationwide business. Then Dennis Neal came home to launch the trailblazing all the way program in his old neighborhood. He provided small classes and one-on-one -on -one instruction. Dennis had promised a college education paid by him if they make it. I wish all schools had a Dennis Neal. Opportunity for New York. Dennis Neal for Lieutenant Governor. Tennis fans, enter the Advantage Lincoln Sweepstakes, and you can travel well by winning a trip for two to Australia or other fabulous prizes. Enter at CBSNewYork.com. Lincoln, proud and enthusiastic sponsor of the 2002 U.S. Open Tennis Championship. Women blame it on hormones. Men on their dads. But both can do something about hereditary hair loss with Rogaine. Nothing's been proven to regrow hair better. And the sooner you start, the better your chance of success. Rogaine works. The sooner, the better. For many, it's hard to believe we are four days and counting to a possible strike by Major League Baseball players. CBS 2 News was at Yankee Stadium today for what could be the last home game of the season. That's if there is a strike on Friday. There are some positive developments, though, between the players' union and the owners. The big issue is the so-called luxury tax on teams that spend $98 million or more on their annual payroll. But many fans say that it's all about greed. I think they're greedier than the players, and the players have the talent. I think the players make a ton of money for playing a boys' game, and that uh, the management is barely making ends meet, and if uh, they don't put in some reasonable limitations like every other sport has, basketball has it, football has it, why shouldn't baseball have it too? And some fans told us if there's a strike, forget about taking them out to the ball game ever again. Federal investigators aren't finding any evidence to charge Martha Stewart in the Imclone scandal. Stewart has turned over emails, phone records, and other documents related to her sale of Imclone stock. She cashed out just before the stock tanked. Congressional investigators have gone over her documents looking for possible evidence that she had inside information on the stock. Although they haven't found anything, they're asking for more records and may still subpoena Stewart to testify. Well, the week on Wall Street starts off on an up note. Ed Crane has been following the action. He joins us live right now from CBS Market Watch. Ed. Ernie, a little bit of everything today. Bears in the morning, bulls in the afternoon. After shedding more than 100 points in the first few hours, the Dow came roaring back this afternoon. The Dow finishing up 46 points. The Nasdaq was also down early, but picked up steam at mid-afternoon and ended up 11 points higher. The S&P mirrored the Nasdaq much of the day and ended seven points up. Dow winners include Home Depot, American Express, and J.P. Morgan Chase. Boeing, McDonald's, and IBM were among the more bearish plays. Jittery about the markets, perhaps more of us are making our homes our biggest investment. New home sales 
up a sizzling 6.7 percent in July. Existing home sales were up 4.5 percent as interest rates dipped to historic lows, the lowest since 1967. To bolster that theory, there's word that a record $49 billion was dumped out of stock mutual funds last month. We know $19 billion in fresh money moved over to bond funds. There's also word that Nestle has been kissing up to Hershey, reportedly offering $11.5 billion for the chocolate giant. That would be a sweet $82 per share for stockholders. Not a done deal, though, with Kraft Foods and Cadbury Schweppes said to be among those also making bids for Mr. Goodbar and company. Babies are booming business these days. Berkshire Industries, the owner of baby apparel maker Carter Holdings, plans to offer newborn shares of its company, rolling out a $100 million IPO. Finally, a sign of the times from state securities regulators cracking their top 10 when it comes to investment fraud we should watch out for. Bad advice from unscrupulous stockbrokers and financial analysts who have conflicting interests. Get more on our website, cbs.marketwatch.com. Com. Back to you, Ernie and Mary. All right, let's see what tomorrow brings. Thanks, Ed. Mm -hmm. Time now for a check of the forecast from CBS2 Weather Central. And here's meteorologist Janine Diadamo sitting in for David Rogers today. Janine. That's right, Ernie. We're talking about cloud cover, at least for the rest of today and for much of the week, too. Let's take a look outside right now at our skyline, the beautiful Chrysler Building shining right now, the Empire State Building, City Corp. You know, we're looking for clouds much of the week, and it's all because of one area of low pressure down to our south. So we'll get to that. But first, we'll start with the temperatures, which are so comfortable. It's 82 right now. Skies are cloudy. We have a little bit of a westerly wind. Humidity is in check. It feels kind of comfortable outside right now, at least compared to what it could be in the last week of August. And the barometer is falling. So your numbers are looking good. Ridge right now, it's cloudy and 77 for you. That west wind also blowing a Newton, two sevens for you also. And city temperatures are just above 80, pretty much average where they should be this time of the year. But here's what's going on on the satellite picture. Watch what happens here. The clouds are coming out of the south. They're not coming north out of Canada. This means this storm system is coming out of the uh, mid-Atlantic. It's going to bring us a very tropical air mass given a little bit of time. For right now, though, cloud cover and the rain down to our south. But here's what happens as we head through the week. This upper level low is basically cut off. That means it's not going to move out quickly. It's just going to sit and spin all the way through Saturday. So a while. So by middle of the week, we're looking for low pressure to slide up the coast, plenty of rainfall and cloud cover. But then by the end of the week, this warm front will push through the area. And that means our weather will be very much like what they're getting in Miami. Very tropical air, humid air and thunderstorms, especially late in the day, Thursday, Friday and Saturday. So tonight we're getting a break. The rainfall doesn't arrive until tomorrow night. So cloudy skies. Temperatures pretty comfortable, 60 in Goshen, 69 in New York City. Then climbing to highs tomorrow in the upper 70s, around 80. Basically a lot like it was today with light winds and cloudy skies. But here's what happens as we head into the next few days. The U.S. Open, you're okay for tomorrow with the cloud cover temperatures just under 80. But let's head into Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. And you have plenty of rain in the forecast. The upper level low should bring us uh, thunderstorms, even Thursday, Friday, and Saturday, and temperatures start climbing again to close to 90 degrees by the weekend. So, like I said, by the end of the week, it feels like Miami weather. In the meantime, Mary will enjoy the cloud cover and cooler temperatures. We sure will. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Well, we have a consumer alert to tell you about regarding a popular breakfast sandwich. Swanson is recalling a variety of its Great Starts biscuit sandwiches. The egg, cheese, and bacon variety has soy protein in it, and that could cause a life-threatening reaction in people with a soy allergy. If you bought the sandwiches, you can return it to the place you bought it for a full refund. If you have any questions, call the CBS2 Information Center at 866-INFO2. That's 866-INFO2. Time now to take a look and see what's coming up on CBS2 News tonight at 6. It could happen in your neighborhood. A convicted sex offender moves in just blocks from your child's school. Cool. We're live with worried parents facing the first day of class. And a CBS2 exclusive, a family who lost a son in the World Trade Center is faced with having to relive his funeral over and over again to keep their faith true to life. Those stories and much more coming up tonight on CBS2 News at 6. Scientists are turning to a strange
creature in their search for a cure for the AIDS virus. Researchers say sea manatees, also called sea cows, have a supercharged immune system. Now doctors are looking to the manatee for tips on how to provide a boost for the human immune system. Since manatees are able to fend off just about any disease, scientists hope they can help find ways for humans to do the same. That sounds nice. Yeah. If you live on Long Island, getting around on the weekend is about to get a whole lot easier. We'll tell you what the MTA has planned. A bombshell in the Democratic race for governor. Here the charge is leveled against Carl McCall's running mate. And also tonight, a possible major medical breakthrough in tonight's Health Watch. One of the largest autism studies ever uncovers a potential treatment. Coming up. CBS Market Watch is brought to you by Verizon. How you live says a lot about who you are, your decor, your architectural style. Your home reflects your personality. When you choose Marvin Windows and Doors, you get exactly what you want. Handcrafted wood interiors, high-quality, durable exteriors to complement your lifestyle. Whatever your vision, Marvin brings it to life. Marvin Windows and Doors, made for you. Let the Marvin Specialists at Woodbury Supply Company handle your next project. Governor George Pataki. In the past year, something remarkable has happened. Instead of tough times pulling us apart, they've brought us together. We've set aside our differences and united on what makes us all New Yorkers. Pride, hard work, courage, and compassion. I'm proud of what you've done, and I'm proud to be your governor. I just wanted to take this opportunity to say thank you. Glenn Peterson has three growing kids and a budget to stick to, so ShopRite's helping him provide the best at low prices. In addition to over 2,000 weekly sale items, Glenn's Price Plus card gives him even more discounts. ShopRite for Labor Day savings. A twin pack of USDA Choice Top Round London Royal, $1.49 a pound with your Price Plus Club card. And whole watermelons, just $2.99 with your Price Plus Club card. Always fresh and always forever. ShopRite. I like New York because it's real, and the people here are real. They got a great sense of humor, too. It's the only city in the world where everybody is so alive. I think they're the nicest people in the world. You know, you can always count on New York. CBS 2, New York. There's no place I'd rather be. Dr. Phil comes to CBS 2 five days a week, beginning September 16th. Well, the other shoe may have dropped in the Democratic race for governor. It's a possible political bombshell involving the number two man on Carl McCall's ticket. And CBS 2's Marsha Kramer is joining us right now with more on that story. Marsha. Well, Ernie, Democratic gubernatorial candidate Carl McCall and running mate Dennis Meal went into damage control mode today, trying to downplay the importance of the story that Meal fathered two kids with two different women while he was separated from his first wife. Dennis has never made a secret of this. He's completely disclosed it. And what's important is he supports his children. He takes care of his children and gives them the kind of financial and emotional support that they need. And that's what we expect of a father. Carl McCall and multimillionaire Westchester businessman Dennis Neal are running as a team. When Democratic voters go to the polls September 10th, they will vote for each man separately. McCall running against Andrew Cuomo in the gubernatorial primary. Neal running against Charles King in the lieutenant governor's primary. Nevertheless, McCall stuck by his running mate today. Dennis Meal will be a partner with me. But Meal was clearly perturbed that his personal life, the fact that he fathered two kids with two different women during his seven-year separation from the wife he finally divorced, was now a big-time campaign issue. And so he struck back, charging that the leak of the story just two weeks before the primary was a negative campaign trick from Team Cuomo. It came to our attention that the Cuomo campaign had decided to make my family circumstance an issue in the primary campaign in an effort to damage Carl McCall uh, based on Carl's association with me and the fact that we're running as a ticket. Neil didn't deny the story, saying he was separated from his first wife, the mother of five of his children, when he got the two other women pregnant. He later married the mother of his youngest child. He claimed his personal life was not an event in the life of the campaign. I don't think it has any effect on our platform. Our platform is about the families of New York. Our platform is not about my family. Now, Team Cuomo said the charges that they leaked the story to the media were outrageous. One Cuomo operative said the source was much more likely to be the Republicans. 
who would want to take Meal out of the equation so he wouldn't be able to invest his personal fortune in the gubernatorial race. Marcia, uh, Karl McCall's campaign has been hit now a couple of times with negative attacks. What, what's going on? Well, a lot, of, a lot of the pundits, the people who watch this race, say that they think that this is an attempt by the Republicans to try to get McCall out of the race because they think it would be much easier for Governor Pataki to run against Andrew Cuomo than Karl McCall. Interesting background. Thanks, Marsha. And we will be back with much more at 6 o'clock. And right now the news continues with Cindy Hsu and Michael Pomerantz in for Todd McDermott with what's straight ahead at 530. All right. Ernie Mary, thank you. Coming up next, fears are spreading about West Nile virus with the first confirmed death in our area. We are live with details for the list of the areas getting sprayed tonight. Also with the Jewish holidays approaching now, the threat of terrorism very real. So what security steps are being taken? Plus, New York City rolls out the red carpet for the Harlem Little Leaguers. We're going to tell you how everyone from President Clinton Clinton to the big wigs on Wall Street are getting in on the action. We'll have those stories for you, plus a check of traffic tonight coming up at 530.